get things started. Ready? Go! Hello and welcome to Bounding in the Comics. My name is John Trent. I'm the founder and editor-in-chief at Bounding in the Comics. Take a story about former Captain Marvel writer Kelly Sue DeConnick lamenting the abysmal state of comics after previously telling people not to buy her books. Before we get to that, I'd like to ask if you'd please hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. If you are already subscribed, please make sure you are still subscribed. YouTube does like to unsubscribe people for whatever reason. And then hopefully you will also share this video with your friends and family. So as I was saying, former Captain Marvel writer Kelly Sue DeConnick lamented the state of the comic book industry after previously telling people not to buy her books. If you recall, DeConnick spoke to Sci-Fi Wire back in October 2017 or she said, if you don't like my politics, don't buy my book. Later in the interview, she added, I'm going to make the book that I'm going to make, and if you don't want to read them, don't read them. Clearly, comic book readers have taken her advice. They're not buying her books, and they're not reading them anymore. In a recently discovered interview from 2019, specifically September 2019, so this was pre-pandemic, DeConnick and her husband, Matt Fraction, sat down with YouTube channel Nerd News with Destiny, where she talked about how poor the state of the comic book industry is. The two were asked, did you think comics would be this sort of phenomenon that it is currently? DeConnick answered, boy, that's hard because from our perspective, the industry has contracted and we're very worried about comics right now. So it's always interesting to me that the outside perspective is always comics are booming. Fraction then chimed in, stating, I don't think I share. I think you're more pessimistic about it than I am. I understand the why of, why of it all, but I also feel like, and he kind of trails off, he would go on to discuss how comic book merchandising has blown up and how The Walking Dead and Scott Pilgrim were the biggest presences at San Diego Comic-Con in the past. He went on to state, we go to shows now and people bring us things to sign we've never seen before. It's crazy, it's inconceivable on some level. But I think there's something cyclical in comics' ability to tap into the popular imagination whether it was Superman in the 30s or a Batman show in the early 60s. You have these moments where there's comic book saturation everywhere. Still, comic book articles get written in the mainstream media with pal zap, right? I think maybe depending on the day you asked, my pessimism would vary. DeConnick will then lay out just how bad of a shape the comic book industry is in. She said, I think I tend to be pretty optimistic, but in this one, I'm worried. I'm straight worried. When asked why she was worried, she said, because stores are closing at a phenomenal rate, independent comic sales are down, mainstream comic sales are down, except the top three or five books are up, everything in the mid-list is way down. Numbers that used to be numbers that would get you canceled are now like, no, that's a hit. Independent books making back the cost of doing floppies is like names that should be able to do it, no sweat, are going into the red on singles and not coming out until the trades, and it worries me. The other thing that worries me is we're heavily dominated by the superhero genre and we're heavily dominated by DC and Marvel as the most successful shared universe comics. And I have nothing against DC and Marvel. I've worked for them both. I love them both. I love both universes. I think superheroes are great. There is no part of me that's like, I had your first album. It's like, great. I can love independent comics and I can love superhero comics. But I have a concern that while the industry, not quite as much as it used to be, it is still heavily dominated by those two companies, and those two companies have gradually become part of larger behemoth corporations. And comics have always been special because of the way they work in the brain, and because of the way that we always have been cheap and fast and therefore innovative. So we could try things in comics because it's far less expensive to screw up in comics than, and then Fraction kind of chimed in, and he said, entire management suites of Hollywood studios get fired for taking the kind of chances we take every week in comics. DeConnick then continued saying, and that's how we continue to innovate and that's why television and film come to us for material is because we can take those risks because we are very inexpensive. And as we become part of these larger behemoths and they have started to see us in terms of brand management, I'm worried that we are going to forget what we're for. Fraction adds, lose innovation in favor of servicing brands. DeConnick then concluded saying, we're not going to be able to innovate the way that we have always been able to and they're going to kill the golden goose. DeConnick and Fraction would go on to discuss the success of Raina Tugemeyer. However, she would once again bring up why she is worried about the state of comic. She explained, it's small, independent stores, maybe a local chain, maybe someone has two or three stores in a city, maybe. But those people love comics, and I worry about them. I want them to be able to keep their lights on. 
I know comics will find a way because we are the original storytelling form. We are the paintings of Lascaux. So comics aren't going to go away, but I worry about the people losing their stores. Interestingly, when they discuss how to solve the problem of declining sales, they don't point to the actual content of the books being created. Rather, they talk about local stores and how they are adapting to stay in business despite the poor product by creating comic book communities. One would think if you're going to analyze why your industry is completely dying, you would look to the actual product that the industry relies on to sell, not the way that local retail stores are trying to sell that product. These people are completely lack of any kind of self-awareness. They don't think that they are the problem. She clearly is the problem when she's telling people not to buy her comics. And if you don't like her politics, don't buy her comics because her politics are going to be in her comics. She tell, like she's literally said that in an interview in 2017. She says, I'm going to make the book that I'm going to make. And if you don't want to read them, don't read them. She's not making books that people want to buy. She's clearly telling you that right now, right there. She said that. She's not going to make books that she thinks people want to buy. She's making the books that she wants to make. She's not out to entertain. So her claiming that she's worried about these local comic book stores is a load of crap. If she was actually worried, she would start writing stories that people would want to buy. And so those retailers would be able to sell that to people and they wouldn't be having this problem about their stores going under. But what makes this interview abundantly clear to me is that things are not going to change because you have people like the Conic Infraction who can't even see the problem at all. They completely ignore the problem and to me the people at DC and Marvel are doing the same thing. They are completely just ignoring the problem and their sales are going to continue to decline and people are going to find alternatives and they have. That's why you see the top 20 adult graphic novels list from MPD book scan being dominated by manga every single month. And it's gonna to continue to be dominated every single month as long as DC and Marvel continue doing things the way that they are doing now. So that's my thoughts on the matter. My name is John Trent and you've been watching Bounding into Comics.